you can now order one of the most hotly anticipated electric crossovers in the United States, the Nissan Aria. The Japanese automaker has just opened the books and also shared its exact production specifications for each version on offer in the US right now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to have you here. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers coming on board recently, and welcome back to everyone else. Now, I just want to say a big thank you to those of you who've become members of the channel. By the way, you do get access to some of our videos up to 24 to 48 hours in advance if you become a member of the channel, and also to those who become Patreons. There's over, I think, 65 Patreons now. Awesome to have you guys on board. And everyone else, you know, if you want to become a Patreon of the channel, just know that you have my deepest thanks for if you do decide to do that, because essentially it helps us to make more videos. So I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. Now, the Nissan Aria, the range, kicks off with the $46,000 Aria Venture Plus that features a single front mounted electric motor whose output is 214 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque or 300 newton meters of torque. It draws from a 91 kilowatt hour battery pack with a usable 87 kilowatt hours. It seems like a really good price for a battery pack that size. The Venture Plus is the only version of the Aria that can achieve a range of 482 kilometers or 300 miles. That's Nissan's estimated range and is yet to be confirmed by the EPA. Now, I'd be absolutely shocked if this is a real world range, because I mean, this is a big battery, usable 87 kilowatt hours. And it's only giving 482 kilometers of range. That's just, doesn't add up. Something's wrong here. Can, if someone can let me know, I know there's some really smart watchers on the channel here. Let me know in the comments section, what's going on? Why is the range so small? Efficiency just seems, I mean, you've seen I've done a 21 car test here on the channel. And no, none of the cars had this kind of efficiency. None of them were this bad with efficiency. I don't know why it is. But regardless, even with the poor efficiency, it's still a pretty good price for a vehicle of this size and these specifications. Now, the two other front wheel drive versions, the same powertrain and battery, the $49,000 Evolve Plus and the 53,450 Premier get a lower range rating of 285 miles or 458 kilometers. If you want a dual motor setup, and all wheel drive. The only version that offers that choice is the $59,000 Platinum plus E-Force variant that has 390 horsepower and exactly double the torque of the front wheel drive variants, which is 600 newton meters or 442 pound feet, as well as a lower range rating of 265 miles or 426 kilometers. Personally, I would love that extra performance. I don't know why I'm just drawn to performance cars for some reason, I've always liked them, but if I've got to give up that range and it's bringing my range of my car down to 426 kilometers, then I probably wouldn't do it. Would you? Let me know in the comments. When it comes to equipment, even the base Venture Plus is not lacking at all. With standard features like adaptive cruise control, ProPilot Assist with NaviLink, a 12.3 inch display for the driver, capacitive door handles, dual zone climate control, electric parking brake, and all the wireless connectivity as well as active and passive safety, Features that you expect on a modern car. That's impressive. I know, I mean, for those of you who don't know and you're not, not watching the video from America, often in America, the base models of cars will come with a very, very low specifications and you've got to pay a fair bit to get a car you actually want. You know, it's very, very common in comparison to other countries that the base models in America have a lot less specific, a lot less in terms of the specifications, but they cost a lot less too. So it gives this kind of bit of a false impression that cars in America are a lot cheaper when actually it's because they come with less. But here you can see the specifications are really good. But I just want to say, I want to make this point. You can get cars in China as a base spec, you know, with these specifications for probably a similar car to this for about 15,000 US dollars less. So it's good, but yeah, I mean, not that good. So what else does it have? Comes standard with 19 inch wheels, full LED headlights, that's nice. Full width LED light bar in the rear, that means nothing to me. Power folding and heated mirrors and an illuminated Nissan logo, which also means nothing to me. 
Electric seats are an option, but the vehicle does get a standard leather wrapped steering wheel and mood lighting. Now, I think electric seats shouldn't be an option, but anyway. Move up to the Evolve Plus and the Aria gains a power panoramic moonroof, power tailgate, LED fog lights, wireless charging for your phone, motor operated glove box, and underfloor trunk storage. The Premier adds the upgraded Pro Pilot 2.0, self parking, illuminated kick plates, and unique 19 inch wheels with aero covers. Now, the top of the range all wheel drive Platinum Plus gets, on top of having an additional motor, active sound, Nappa leather, power operated steering adjustment, a Bose premium audio system with 10 speakers. And this is the only version where you can actually select to get different wheels, including special 20 inch wheels. Now, personally, I think if you pay more money to get wheels that are one inch bigger, then yeah, um, I've got a bridge to sell you because a fool and his money are easily parted with. I'm sorry if you've done that in the past, but don't bother, what's the need? All model variants get unique grade emblems on the outside to make them easy to tell apart. They all charge at a maximum 130 kilowatt. Too slow in my view. I think they should have faster charging in this price bracket, but let me know if you agree with me. You get 7.2 kilowatt charging with the onboard charger. And if you want to order one, you can access Nissan's special reservation portal. Now, apparently the first vehicles will reach customers in fall of 2022. Now, I don't know if Nissan's making enough of these to actually uh, supply demand. I'm gonna guess that they probably not because most car companies just can't meet current electric car demand. And let's be honest, most car companies are just not making enough electric cars. But right now it appears as though you can order one to get it in 2022, which is fantastic news. Now, I don't know about you, but I personally quite like this design of this vehicle. I think a lot of Nissan cars are not the best looking, but this to me looks quite nice. So my question to you is, would you prefer this or a Tesla Model Y? Personally, I've got to say I prefer a Tesla Model Y, but I think this is also a pretty good vehicle. Now, there's one thing about this vehicle that I don't know I think was a good move. I think probably more people would prefer rear-wheel drive versus front-wheel drive. So all the models except for the most expensive model come with front-wheel drive only. And considering it is an SUV or it is a crossover, to me that doesn't really make sense. I think that probably would be smarter to have more all-wheel drive options across the cheaper ranges or alternatively to have this vehicle come in rear-wheel drive across the cheaper versions. And that's just my preference though. What do you think about that? Now remember, one of the big benefits to this vehicle is that with the new EV tax incentives, you will get seven and a half thousand US dollars removed from the price of this vehicle. So it's actually gonna be a fair bit cheaper than what it first appears. Now there's one other slight drawback that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is the 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger, which is a bit slow. Even the Volkswagen ID4 has 11 kilowatts. So if you need to charge often, this might not be the vehicle for you. But then again, it might not matter. You might be able to get home at, say, 6 o'clock and not use your car again until, you know, 6 or 7 a.m. the next day. So that might not be an issue. Just one thing to consider, though, when you buy an EV is to consider the onboard charger and if that's going to be suitable for your needs. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for watching the video. Looking forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.